with that said, we will just go ahead and get started. So today we're going to be doing a V ring. Uh, it's not going to be this exact one. I couldn't really find a ring that I'm going to be doing, but it'll essentially be this with the head right here kind of pulled closer right here. So they're pretty popular nowadays. I'm sure if you're a jeweler you or designer, you've, you've done one of these. So let's get started. All right. So with every ring, we need to start with a ring row, right? So I can select ring row up at the top under tools submenu, and it will populate this. Now you can use the drop downs right here to select the finger size, or you can use the scroll bars. And sometimes, it, depending on the command, they have viewport handles that you can use. Preferably, I use the viewport handles whenever I model. So if you see me doing that, just don't get freaked out. So let's go to a finger size seven and right click to accept. There we go. All right, so next we need the outside shape. So I pretty much, anytime I have a ring, use an outside ring row. So select that command and this is what you get. Now, like I said, I can use the sliders right here, or I can use the viewport handles, which I tend to use more often than not. So let's do a two by two by 2.5. If I right click, I now have the through finger outline of my ring. So next we need to get that, that pear shape and create that V but we're going to use the stone to help us do that. That way our model stays fully parametric, right? So let's run Jim on ring rail and you can see it puts around Jim. Now I can use this. Now you can see I need a pair and I accepted the command before I was ready, right? So I can actually come here and edit each command. That way I can choose my pair I'm going to put a custom size of 11 by 7 by 68 and use the viewport handles to adjust the rest. So I can right click and now I have my pair and the outline of my ring. So like I said, we're going to use the pair shape to help us create that kind of arc right so like i said we'll use a curve so gym offset curve and you can see i have an outline right here so let's pull it down to to the top right here and we'll offset it by like 1.5 maybe not that much maybe one and right click so i'm going to need one here and then one for my bottom curve so let's run that command one more time and right click. All right, so now we're going to blend these and these. So to do that, I'm going to do a curve from two view. So a curve from two view takes two planar curves. So this one is planar against my construction plane. And then if I go top view, these are planar looking down, right? So planar just means they're flat on one plane. So let's run that. I'm sorry, let me back up. So auto hide down here is a powerful tool inside parametrics. So the way parametrics work, if you think of a tree, they layer things on top of one another. So it starts with the trunk, goes to a branch, goes to a smaller branch, and then gets all the way down to a leaf, right? That'll be the, the end. So we have to, in order to maintain parametrics, keep that whole tree intact. You, you have to keep everything inside the document. So this auto hide is something we developed that will automatically hide geometry from you to maintain parametrics. If I have it toggled on and I run, you can see my ring rail now goes away. Now we developed it 
to where it hides it right here as well. And you can always come here and just show it, right? But if I have it off, I can run curve from two views and it will stay in the document. So let's go back, let's turn this on. Curve from two view, let's select the curve, GV hide, and we will bring back our outside curve. You can always use these to stay organized, right? So I could come down here and rename them, top V rail, and rename this one, say bottom V rail. Parametric design is so new to the industry that we're kind of all just figuring it out together, to be honest. But I would rather be with Jim Vision, who's leading the development on parametric design then further in the back you know yeah so now that we have two curves that are form fit to our ring rail we need to blend them together right so i can select blend curve select this rail and then my rail up here and if i pull this you can see i'm starting to get that v look right I need to do a few more edits. So let's do that right now. I'm going to increase the blend amount so it contours better. And that's pretty good. So I'm going to toggle the join curve. And what that's going to do is going to join all the curves that the blend is using. So yeah, I just want to get that right. And this one looks good. So I can right click to accept. And now I have my top. So let's do the same, but we're going to do it for the inside rail. So blend curve, ring rail, then my curve from two view rail. Let's pull this to location. Try and match this as close as possible. Then we need to increase the blend amount. There we go. And to do the same as the previous, I'm going to join curve. Maybe not go down quite so far. There we go. And I can right click. So now I have these curves. So now we just need to essentially profile place. So under tools, select profile place. I will select my inside curve. Let's bring this down about to the uh, four, four, well, five and seven locations. It'll make sense um, when we get further down. So I'm going to change the profile shape to a more square look. Let's go to a three millimeter. Let's add one about here. Let's use the gumball to adjust. And then we need to relate these. So just for reference. So right now, this profile is not related to that outside curve. So now when I move it, it can get taller than that outside curve. So I want to relate all of my profiles to it. So up at the top, there's an outside curve box. If I click that and click the outside curve, now, no matter where I pull it, it'll stay relative to that location. Got it? So let's pull it about there. Like I said, let's add one here. Use the gumball a bit to reduce the width or a nice taper. And then let's add at the top. We're not going to go all the way like you would think. You don't want to go past halfway point. So if you can think from a top view, uh, this would be the center point. You want to go past that because you're going to get surface flipping on each other. So you want to go as close as possible, but not cross it. So that's good right there. And what we can do is Paper this one. So now I can toggle under dynamic commands, activate.